Hi there and welcome to Dr. Nora's clinic. Today I'll be taking you through everything you need to know about blood pressure, from what it is, what it means to have a high or low blood pressure and how to keep your blood pressure normal. Now we've all heard of blood pressure, whether it's high blood pressure, low blood pressure, blood pressure monitoring, but what does it all mean? To understand this better, let's first take a look at the heart. Our heart pumps blood around the body to deliver oxygen and energy. As the blood moves, it pushes against the sides of the vessels. This is known as blood pressure. If this pressure is too high, it means that there is extra strain on those vessels and hence a high blood pressure. But Dr. Nora, why should I care about blood pressure? Well, we know that those people with a high blood pressure are at an increased risk of developing things like heart attacks and strokes. So it's always worthwhile to get your blood pressure checked regularly to avoid those risks later on in life. But what causes a high blood pressure? When we look at the causes of a high blood pressure, we can divide it into two main sections. The first being lifestyle or modifiable risks. These are things that you can change in your day-to-day -day life. And the second being non-modifiable factors. And these are things that you can't change in your day-to-day -day life. So let's take a look at the lifestyle or modifiable factors. This include things such as your weight, your salt intake, how much exercise you do, how much alcohol you drink on a regular basis, and whether or not you eat regular fruit and vegetables. When we look at the non-modifiable factors, this will include things such as your ethnic origin. For example, we know that those from an Afro-Caribbean or a South Asian population tend to have a slightly higher blood pressure. It also includes things such as your family history. If you've got a family history of high blood pressure, you're more likely to suffer from high blood pressure yourself. It also includes other medical problems. For example, if you suffer from kidney problems or diabetes, you're more likely to develop high blood pressure in the future. These are factors you cannot change in your life, whereas lifestyle factors you can modify in your day-to-day -day routines. But how do I check my blood pressure? Checking your blood pressure is easy and simple. There are blood machines available in all general practices, some chemists as well have them, and you can even buy your own blood pressure machine. As a child, you may remember your doctor using a machine where they used their stethoscope and an air inflator to check for the blood pressure. That's known as a sphygmomanometer. It's still used these days, but there are some automatic blood pressure machines which are equally as effective and more simpler to use. If you choose to take your own blood pressure at home, it's important to note that there are some things which can make your blood pressure elevate or rise temporarily. Those things can include eating, smoking 30 minutes before taking your blood pressure, drinking caffeine beforehand, or even going to the toilet. So if you have done any of those activities before checking your blood pressure, make sure you wait for 30 minutes so you get an accurate reading. When you choose to take your blood pressure at home, make sure you find a quiet and relaxed environment to take it in. Ideally, you want to be on a desk where your arm is resting on a pillow and your feet flat on the ground. Wear a loose fitting top so you can access the top of your arm. The cuff should be placed around your arm so that it's at the same level as your heart. You can adjust your pillow if you need to. Make sure you've rested for a few minutes before you start the reading. Once the reading is complete, write down the exact number that you found on your blood pressure machine. Sometimes the number can be quite higher than expected. Don't be alarmed because you can always repeat it. And if you are anxious about the first reading, it can often make the second reading higher too. Repeat the process until you've got a nice low reading and then write that number down to show to your doctor. Unless you've been specifically asked by your doctor to check your blood pressure, for example, if you've started a new medication or if they want to measure your blood pressure at home, you don't need to check your blood pressure every single day. Sometimes your doctor will advise you to do it every six months to every year. If you are checking your blood pressure, make sure you check it at the same time every day, for example, in the morning or after you've taken your medications. Take these readings to your doctor so that you can show them what your readings are doing. Okay, so now you've got your numbers, what do they actually mean? Well, on your machine, you will see that there are two numbers. The top number is known as your systolic pressure. This is the highest level your blood pressure reaches when your heart beats. The bottom number is known as your diastolic pressure. This is the lowest level your blood pressure reaches when your heart is relaxing between beats. But what do the numbers actually mean? Well, this does depend on a number of factors. For example, your age, any other medical problems that you have, and any medications you take on a regular basis. Your doctor will be able to provide you with a target blood pressure. As a rough guide, your blood pressure ideally needs to be below 120 over 80. 
Research has shown that having this blood pressure will help to reduce your risk of developing strokes and heart problems later on in life. But Dr. Nora, my blood pressure is higher than that. What shall I do? If your blood pressure is between 120 over 80 to 140 over 90, you should take active steps to try and reduce this as much as you can. It doesn't mean that you have a high blood pressure, but it does mean that you are at a slightly increased risk of developing heart problems in the future. So it's worthwhile taking this seriously. But what is high blood pressure? The medical term for high blood pressure is known as hypertension, so you may hear a doctor saying this. This is where your blood pressure is consistently above 140 over 90 over a period of a few weeks. This can cause extra strain on your vessels and therefore lead to heart disease and stroke in the future. You may not necessarily have any symptoms if you do suffer from high blood pressure, but sometimes some people report headaches and visual problems as well. But what about low blood pressure? The medical term for this is hypotension. This is where your blood pressure is consistently below 90 over 60. It's not usually a concern unless you do have symptoms such as fainting episodes, dizziness or feeling lightheaded. It's really important that if you do have any of these symptoms, you should go and see your medical practitioner. There are some other reasons as to why somebody might have low blood pressure. For example, this could be related to any medications that the person is taking. Any other medical problems, for example, patients with Parkinson's disease may have a lower blood pressure as well. If the blood pressure is too low, then your GP can facilitate treatment to help raise this up again. Okay, so you've learned all about what blood pressure is and what high blood pressure and low blood pressure is, but do you actually need to monitor your blood pressure? Well, that's a really good question. It is important for you to have your blood pressure checked at regular intervals. Of course, if you're taking medications and your doctor has told you that you need regular blood pressure monitoring, then you should follow their instructions. However, if you're a healthy person, then six monthly to one yearly blood pressure checks are sufficient. If your blood pressure is abnormal in clinic, then your doctor might ask you to measure your blood pressure at home, because sometimes in clinic your blood pressure can be falsely raised. This is known as white coat hypertension, which is basically where you don't like the side of your doctor and it causes your blood pressure to go up. <laughs> All right, so now that you've checked your blood pressure, how can you keep it within a nice, normal, healthy range? Well, there are a lot of things that you can do to keep your blood pressure within a good, normal range. For example, eating more fruit and vegetables will help to keep your blood pressure low. Looking at your salt intake is also really important for your blood pressure, bearing in mind that there are lots of hidden salts in lots of food items, such as bread, for example. It's also really important to maintain your weight within a healthy range. Have a look at how much alcohol you're drinking as well. Too much alcohol can cause your blood pressure to go up. In Australia, the current recommendations for alcohol intake are no more than two to four drinks per night, four times a week. And finally, and by no means least, is exercise. Exercise is really important for reducing your blood pressure. We recommend as medical practitioners to carry at least 30 minutes of exercise five times in a week where your heart is getting slightly out of breath and pumped up. This we know will help to reduce your risk of heart problems in the future and also reduce your blood pressure as well. So there you have it, those are the ins and outs of blood pressure and I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you do have any questions about blood pressure or are concerned for yourself, please don't hesitate to drop by and see me in clinic or see your medical practitioner. And if you do have any questions, of course, leave me a comment in the comment section below. I hope you found this video useful and I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care and stay happy.